Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to tell you about basically the birth of geometric topology. A birth here really in huge quotation marks or with a question mark or whatever. Um, so but it's hard to tell what, of course, what the birth of topology, geometric topology was. But I would like to think about it in the sense that if you have seen algebraic topology, and this is exactly the, the part of historically speaking, where algebraic topology completely failed. It was a discovery of spaces that are called lens spaces. It's a certain type of three manifolds that we will see in this video. And the generalization of those lens spaces are the Briscoe manifolds uh, or the Seifert manifolds that we have seen in the last video. Okay, so let's have a look at those lens spaces. They're kind of very strange objects. So uh, let's have a look at what they make perfectly sense as manifolds and they will comment as we go along why algebraic topology completely fails uh, in quotation mark to well in the study of lens spaces. And it was kind of, as I said, the real birth of geometric topology because different methods were needed and algebraic topology was, was kind of out of breath here. Okay, remember that we had this picture of the meridian and the remedi remedian, uh, meridian, meridian gets mapped to a certain curve, the gamma here, and that defines you uh, a gluing of the torus, and this defines you the Dane circle. And the gamma, I will write it as uh, A times the meridian uh, times uh, plus B times the longitude, depending now how often we go around. So for example, um, in this picture, I go around in this direction, P equals three, Q equals one. Um, so this should be the PQ here, and this corresponds to this choice of A and B. So this is A and this is B, and it just twists, and in this case goes around three times uh, along the longitude, and then just, just one turn uh, along the meridian. Um, sorry, yeah, so P equals three, three times along the longitude. Uh, look here, this entry corresponds to B, and one A corresponds to this one in just the opposite twist. That's just the convention here. Uh, so, But those numbers just measure how often you go around the torus uh, in either direction. So P is the longitude, and Q is the meridian up to some conventions of science. And in order to make that work, you uh, just say that P and Q are co-prime. So in this video, P and Q will be co-prime, for example, five and three or something like that, right? And the space you get from the usual date surgery here is called the length space PQ. Okay, I said again, we take out a very boring, I show you the, um, the knot diagrams in a second, we kind of take out a very boring um, knot, knot here and we do this PQ along the torus and what we get is called a lens space, and that's a certain type of three manifold. Um, so the way to do this in general with surgery knots is the following. So for PQ, the lens space you want to define, here comes the definition in terms of surgery. You write P over Q as a continued fraction like this. Uh, so the usual expression will be finite because P and Q will just be a, a fraction. So this will be some finite collection of X's and you just have the corresponding collection of hopflings labeled by, so uh, with a framing given by the axis. For example, you can have something like five and two, which was not quite my example here. I had five and three here, but let's do five and two. Uh, five, two is actually the continuous fraction three, two, because it's three minus a half, right? Five over two, that's a, the number I want is of course 2.5. And that's in this notation here, careful about the signs here, that's convention. Uh, this is three minus a half. So um, I get three and two, uh, right? So three here and two here as my surgery numbers. And then this manifold is obtained by surgery around the framed hop fling, uh, the minus three and minus two framed hop fling in this case. And you just do the same in general for arbitrary um, P and Q, you just have the continued fraction expression. You get a bunch of hop flings and they are labeled, they're framed by the corresponding numbers you get from the continued fraction. So this is kind of the easiest type of family of three manifolds you can imagine. Surgery, well, maybe not the easiest, but 
uh, one of the first ones you would come up with in this idea of copy calculus, uh, the Dane surgery around knots, because it's a hop fling, it's just a, a bunch of hop flings. And you would like to think of this as a graph, as pe many people do, just one vertex per hop fling. Then this is just the easiest graph you can imagine, namely just the line graph. And you can just, um, so it's surgery al along the line graph if you want. So it's kind of an easy family of uh, manifolds that in this picture you define very, very quickly, but this picture is fairly new compared to geometric topology itself. And the first definition of those spaces was, was at least in my opinion, uh, much more involved. But here it's really not hard, continued fraction of P and Q, and you get the uh, corresponding labeled hopling, hopflings for the surgery, and you do this operation along uh, all of them. So let me show you actually the animation of Wikipedia of the original construction of the space, which is not so easy, but kind of uh, explains the name um, length spaces. So why how people did it? Uh, I personally those little things here are called lenses. That's where the name lens space comes from, like the lens in the eye. Um, and it was originally defined as a quotient of S three modulo this turning around map. If you just think about what this does, and so Z Z two Z one and Z two are just the coordinates of S3, um, if you just think of it in complex four space, and then you just have those uh, numbers. And essentially what they do, they turn the sphere in a specific manner, very similar to this one, and you take the quotient. And that was the original definition of uh, the length spaces. As a particular example for two one, it would be RP4, RP3, um, so namely S3 modulo antipodal points. So for P equals two, and uh, Q equals one, this really just swaps. So on the sphere, you do the antipodal map going from here to from X to minus X. And in general, you do some higher kind of turning order version of this. And this is where the name comes from, as I said, and these are the lenses in this picture. I personally find it very hard to imagine for my brain, a surgery and long hop flings works much better. But this, as I said, came historically much, much later, while this one goes back around 100 years. Uh, so around 100 years from now, people discovered those lens spaces, and that actually really fired the, well, the field of geometric topology, because, well, now I have a statement for you that algebraic topology actually fails for those lens spaces. So the lens spaces are the first known, first known examples of three manifolds that were not determined by the homology and the fundamental group alone. So algebraic topology as a field, kind of that's essentially about homology and the fundamental group. Um, well, of course, it's much bigger as a field, but they are very, very important concepts. And here it really fails. And it kind of gets as worse as you want. So I just took out some examples here. Uh, so 5.1 and 5.2, they're not homeomorphic, but they have isomorphic fundamental groups and the same homology. So algebraic topology can essentially tell you nothing about them. Algebraic topology tells thinks they are the same, but they're not. Um, and it, it gets even worse. So uh, seven and seven one and seven two have even the same homotopy type. And homotopy is one of the crucial notions that make algebraic topology tick. So uh, essentially what I'm saying here is algebraic topology doesn't help you to study those well, or at least not too much, it doesn't help you too much to study those manifolds. And that's why different methods needed to be pushed further um, to just get a handle on these lens spaces, which as I said again, in the surgery definition are actually pretty harmless. It's just a, a bunch of uh, hopflings and you do sur uh, surgery around uh, along a bunch of hopflings, which is kind of the easiest non-trivial construction you can come up with maybe. And the Seifert manifolds I mentioned in the last video are generalization of this, they're generalized lens spaces. So we have the continuous fraction expression now for a, a bunch of those, uh, A1, B1, A, N, B, N, uh, this comma is a, a typo, and the, the framing is given in the very same way by uh, constructing those um, continuous fractions and have some surgery around a certain type of Hopflink configuration as illustrated here. So I think of them as generalized uh, lens spaces. And the one from the previous video is the one with three entries. And there's a certain way 
uh, to do this. And the Seifert manifolds, they're in some sense even worse from the viewpoint of algebraic topology. So uh, they include the Poincaré sphere, for example. So they're homology spheres. They have the homology type of a sphere very often, uh, but they're not the spheres. So from the third reconstruction, it's just funny, this continuous fraction and sticking together hoplings, you can actually create various families of very strange manifolds that are kind of beyond the scope of algebraic topology. Okay, um, land spaces are really hard to imagine. As I said, my personal favorite is still hopflings and surgery around hopflings. Um, but the point is they kind of fail any test. Well, maybe not any test, but the main tests you would throw at them from algebraic topology, they just, algebraic topology doesn't help you. And this was kind of the pushing for pushing a geometric topology new ideas further. And well, it was kind of, if you want the birth of geometric topology in a certain sense. Anyway, they are a really cool family of, of three manifolds, which we definitely should be aware of uh, because they're really relatively easy if you really just think in terms of hopflings and the, type, the, the little line graph that I've drawn, they're actually pretty easy to construct, but still are kind of complex as structures itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.